This is Twit. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your used gadgets. Find out what your used iPhone, iPad, and other Apple products are worth at gazelle.com. Hello, Newman and everyone else. Welcome to i5 for the iPhone, episode 120. And a very wet and rainy one here at Twit World Headquarters here in Petaluma, California, but the show does go on. By the way, i5 covers the latest iPhone apps and tips and tricks, and of course news, so you came to the right place. I'm Sarah Lane. Let's begin. Number one. Earlier this month, Dropbox announced that they'd partnered up with Microsoft to allow us to edit within Microsoft Word and Excel and PowerPoint apps right from within Dropbox on our iPhones. Today, the feature is live. So you open up one of the Office apps on iOS, that's either Word or Excel or PowerPoint, they're all separate apps now, and you get a prompt to connect to Dropbox. After you link your accounts, any doc that you want to quickly edit without worrying about resyncing to Dropbox can just be edited directly from Dropbox. You can also open files that are stored in your Dropbox account directly, for example, from inside Excel, so it works both ways. The Dropbox feature is currently only available on iOS and Android. It isn't a desktop version, and it isn't expected to be one until mid-2015, so call yourselves lucky, mobile iPhone users. Number two. Okay, so I'm not sure how paranoid you are about leaving your Mac unattended without locking it down with a password. I am very paranoid. I don't really have anything to hide, but that's not the point, right? I have my MacBook set to lock after it goes to sleep for five seconds, which means that every time I step away for just a few seconds, even just to like, I don't know, grab a glass of water, whatever it is, and then I come back to my Mac, I always have to wake it up, and then I have to enter my password. And that is not the end of the world. I've chosen to do this, but I also have to do this, oh, I don't know, 50 times a day, maybe more, constantly. Now with my iPhone, it's all Touch ID. I almost never enter my password anymore, unless I had to restart the phone, right? It's great, Touch ID is the way to live. So I'm excited about a new app called Finger Key that allows iPhone users, who are also Mac users, and I know that's a lot of you, to unlock our computers using Apple's Touch ID fingerprint sensor on the iPhone 5S, the 6, or the 6 Plus via Bluetooth. This is possible because of a new feature in iOS 8 where Apple opened up the Touch ID sensor to third-party apps for logins. Now, it used to be you could only use Touch ID to unlock the phone itself or authenticate a uh, purchase in the App Store or iTunes. So, you download Finger Key on your iPhone, and then an app called Finger Lock on your Mac needs both. Then you connect your phone and Mac via Bluetooth, works regularly with pairing. Once you're paired, put the Mac to sleep, swipe left on the Mac's name in your Finger Key app to activate the login, and then use Touch ID to remotely log in. Works great. It takes a couple seconds, it could be a little snappier, but it's probably about as fast as typing in your password all the time on the Mac itself. Oh, and also, you can add Finger Key to your notification center and then just authenticate that way instead of opening up the app itself. Pretty cool. I was impressed anyway. Finger Key is $1.99 in the App Store, and it does require that Mac app as well, but that one's free. Number three. So a couple episodes ago, we passed along a tip about putting a boarding pass onto an iPhone lock screen as an image to get through security as fast as possible. We got an update from Thomas, who's got great news for any of you that thought making a boarding pass an image on a lock screen was too hard. Thomas writes, in the bottom right-hand corner of your Passbook boarding pass card is an info button. That'll let you turn on the show on lock screen feature. Then you just wake up your phone and swipe to show your boarding pass. Be careful about doing the photo option that was suggested. I was reprimanded twice by TSA and a gate agent for not using the airline app or Passbook. They say people could create a fake boarding pass and then just take a screenshot. Well, Thomas, that is a very good tip, and thanks also for the word of warning. It's always nice to know that you might be reprimanded by the TSA and know how to avoid it. See, I knew you guys were the ones to count on. We're all in this together. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Gazelle. New from Gazelle, you can buy certified pre-owned iPhones, Samsung Galaxy phones, and iPads directly from Gazelle. If you've lost or broken your phone, it happens. A certified pre-owned device 
is a really great way to just get a low-cost replacement device and not have to get one outright and save a little bit of money. Now, Gazelle still, of course, offers great deals on trade-ins for your old device or devices, things that you are starting to collect in your junk drawer like I used to. Go to gazelle.com, that's G-A-Z-E-L-L-E.com, and see what devices are available from Gazelle in those certified pre-owned conditions. Devices are available in two conditions, certified like new and certified good. Now, of course, certified good devices might show a little gentle wear and tear, but they offer you a way to save a little bit of money with a great device at a great price, and maybe that iPhone that you broke or lost had a few scratches too, so it'll be kind of familiar. All devices have been put through a pretty rigorous 30-point inspection to ensure that they're fully functional. Certified pre-owned devices are backed by a 30-day risk-free return policy. Gazelle loves those. Now, of course, for your trade-ins, you get paid in cash, payment is fast, it's risk-free, you lock in a quote for 30 days, and Gazelle will even wipe all your data for free once you send your old devices in. Maybe you want to get rid of your iPhone 5S or the iPad mini with the retina display because you want the mini 2 or the mini 3. What is your iPhone or other device worth? Well, take a minute and go to gazelle.com to find out. Get some money for those devices that you aren't using anymore to put towards the ones you want. Thanks to Gazelle for sponsoring this episode of i5. Number four, we got an email from Miguel in Mexico City. Hello, Miguel, who has a tip for anybody desperately trying to save their battery life by any means necessary. Miguel writes, for all you battery anxious iPhone users, go to settings, then general, then accessibility, then grayscale, and switch it to on. This will turn your phone to grayscale and you'll have battery for a couple more hours. Well, yeah, of course, because color is actually more battery intensive than just black and white and stripping everything out between the extremes. That makes sense. Seems like kind of a silly hack, I know. But then again, I also tell you guys to turn down your brightness if you really, really, really need to save battery and you're out of options and you're nowhere near a charge. Grayscale is like, I don't know, a fun alternative where you can give yourself a little film noir adventure and spare yourself a couple hours of living off the grid because nobody wants that. Or you could go grayscale and then you could turn your brightness down like almost to black and then see if you can use your iPhone in blizzard conditions. That's the ultimate test. Finally, number five. Okay, so I take a ton of screenshots on my phone, which is really easy. You know, you press the lock button and the home button simultaneously, and you could take a picture of whatever you see, because then those screenshots become images that go into your camera roll, just like a photo, and then you can go back through them and use them. Sometimes I need to take a screenshot for this show, like a specific screen that I might want to save of an app, or I'm afraid I might be able to not replicate it later or a funny moment in a text conversation with a friend, a post on Instagram, and I humiliate them. And even in Snapchat, you can take a screenshot of a visual that isn't really supposed to last, although the app will call you out on it. Point is, screenshots are really useful, but they can clutter up your photos over time, especially if you take a lot of them. You might take a screenshot, forget about it, and then now you got like 50 of them, and you don't even really know why you had them in the first place. You don't want them. So don't despair. A 99 cent app called Screeny will batch delete them for you. You just use it to scan your camera roll and then you select the screenshots that you don't want. Screeny tells you how much space you'll get back. These aren't huge files, but hey, it is space. And then you can go ahead and delete them. This is another one of those cool new features in iOS. Along with Touch ID accessibility, developers can also get delete photo access as well. Thanks, Apple. Small step for iOS, but a step in the right direction. I also take really weird screenshots, turns out. And that's it for this episode of i5. Thanks for being here, everybody. All of our apps and links and other information from this show is at twit.tv slash i5. That's I-F-I-V-E. Email your ideas and your questions and your feedback and your advice to me at i5 at twit.tv. You can also leave us a voicemail at 614 on i5. And uh, that's about it. I'm Sarah Lane, and we'll see you next week. Bandwidth for i5 for the iPhone is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com.